Today's programme in our series Choirs and Places Where They Sing features the choir of St John's College, Cambridge, with the organist and master of the choristers, George Guest, and the organ scholar, Jonathan Bealby. The programme is introduced by John Betjeman. They should never have allowed traffic into the backs of Cambridge. It smashes something fragile and irreplaceable, the best sequence of river frontages in England. There's the serene Portland Stone Fellows Building of Kings, contrasting with the many pinnacled chapel beside it. Then the mellow stone frontage of Clare, and the long classic facade of Wren's Library for Trinity, and the elegant little bridges that leap the river to reach these places from here in the backs. And then there's what we've come to see, a cluster of pale red Tudor brick gables and battlements climbing the steepest slope from the river, St John's College, or John's as it's called. This is the college where the taste of each century has been most violently asserted. I mean, look at the building here where we're standing which was the first encroachment onto the backs of the university. The bridge that joins it to the old red brick college is in a flimsy fence with open traceried windows and roofed over. It's the romantic bridge of size and leads to John's new building here on the backs. And the new building used contemptuously to be called the wedding cake. To me, it's a superb piece of skyline, imaginative and satisfying, open cloisters between regular blocks and a central tower with turrets, the fanciful plaster gothic of the reign of George IV and the novels of Sir Walter Scott. Behind it, our own age, in Powell and Moyer's newest building for John's, asserts itself gleaming white with horizontal lines and lumpy skyline a contrast in scale and material with the flimsy Georgian Gothic in front of it. Above the red brick of the old college rises, surprisingly, the tower of Pershaw Abbey, reproduced in yellowish-brown Ancaster stone. It's well placed, as seen from the river, and gathers the roof lines round it. There is no better enclosed walk in all Cambridge than from end to end of John's either way. When you come up here from the backs, out of the old red brick into the first court, or if you see it from the town streets, the chapel is uncompromisingly mid-Victorian. The more old-fashioned would say it was unforgivably mid-Victorian, this T-shaped chapel, built on the plan of an Oxford College chapel by Sir Gilbert Scott, who designed it in 1863 and thought he was building in the Gothic of 1263 and personally I must say I like it. I like it partly because it's a deliberate assertion of its age and also because it grows on you as you enter in justification for the style 13th century English decorated was that there was once a hospital of this date on the site of the college but I can't believe that the chapel of that little hospital, which was probably a humble building, could possibly have been adorned, as is the present chapel of John's College, with marble from Devon, Ireland, Scotland and Sicily. And I think one reason why John's rebuilt its chapel was that in the 1860s it was a stronghold of the high church movement. And in Cambridge... The Tudor style was thought by high churchmen to be debased and decadent, and the middle pointed or decorated was considered perfection. And I suspect that another reason why John's wanted a bigger and greater chapel was that it wanted to outdo its neighbour and chief rival, Trinity College. The inside of John's anti-chapel is awe-inspiring in its proportions. Clustered columns of polished marble soar up into the dark height of the tower crossing which they help to support. It's like a cathedral. Then, through the wooden carved screen, 
you see the length of the chapel itself. Coloured marble on floor and walls and in the gorgeous apse where the high altar is. And it's all seen in the glow of the mitigated light shed by Clayton and Bell's Victorian stained glass. The painted wooden roof rises to an elegant point and it's about as deep as the stone walls below it which support it are high. And to these, the dark wood of the stalls forms a strong base, about a third of the whole height. Maybe the stone sculpture on Corbel and Capital is a bit hard and crisp. Maybe the marble is new looking. But the chapel is a convinced product of its still unfashionable time. The less it mellows, the better it looks, and it needs a clean. It is famous for its musical services and perfect for sound throughout its length. The choir is formed in exactly the same way as that at King's College, 16 boys and student choral scholars for the men's parts but you'll notice immediately the difference in style. The most noticeable characteristic of this choir is the very individual, rather continental tone produced by the boys. All the choral music in this programme is by composers of this century. And we hear first the Magnificat for Boys' Voices and Organ by Bernard Rose, the organist of Magdalen College, Oxford.
Now an organ piece, played by Jonathan Bealby, the Canzona in C major by Buxtehuda.
Now we hear the full choir in two anthems by previous organists of St. John's. First, hear the voice and prayer by C. B. Rootham, who died in 1938.
After that anthem by Rutum, we hear They That Put Their Trust in the Lord by Dr. Robin Orr, who after being organist here became professor of music at Glasgow University and is now professor of music back here in Cambridge. Now another piece played by Jonathan Bealby, Litanies, by the French composer Jean Alain, who was shot in the Second World War by the Germans.
Now choir and organ combine for Hymn of St Columba by Benjamin Britten. We end this program from John's with the Magnificat from the evening service by Michael Tippett. Tippett wrote this especially for this choir on the occasion of the 450th anniversary of the foundation of the college. You'll notice the effective writing for the trumpet stop on the organ. You can see these pipes pointing horizontally into the chapel.
That was today's programme in our series, Choirs and Places Where They Sing. John Betjeman introduced the choir of St John's College, Cambridge, with the organist and master of the choristers, George Guest, and the organ scholar, Jonathan Bealby.